Google Analytics 4 is the future of collecting data and measuring your website's performance. And since its release in 2020, there have been many feature updates to help you better understand what's happening on your website. It's vital that you have at least a basic understanding of how to navigate and use Google Analytics 4. Hey guys, Stuart here, welcome along to this channel. I hope you're all having a productive day. Now in this Google Analytics 4 tutorial for beginners, I'm gonna help you navigate through your Google Analytics 4 account, discuss some vital features and important analytics that you need to know so that you can walk away feeling confident at understanding your website's performance using Google Analytics 4. Okay, so before we go ahead and launch into Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already or if you're new to this channel, and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge, and tools to help your small business thrive online. And with that quick note out the way, let's go ahead and get you up and running with Google Analytics 4. <music> Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into this Google Analytics 4 overview for beginners, helping you understand how to collect, measure, and understand your website's performance through Google Analytics. Now, if you're completely new to Google Analytics 4 and you're yet to connect Google Analytics with your website, then what I'll do is add a few tutorials in the description below this video that will guide you through the initial process of connecting Google Analytics 4 with your website. Those tutorials will be for Wix, Squarespace, Shopify, and WordPress users. So again, if you're yet to create and connect your Google Analytics 4 account with your website, I suggest you check out those tutorials first. Okay, so jumping right into your Google Analytics 4 account, what we wanna do is navigate up to all accounts, then navigate down to Analytics accounts and make sure you have the correct account selected. Then over under properties and apps, you wanna make sure that you have Google Analytics 4 connected and selected. Now above, you can see we already have the Universal Analytics account here, which is the older version of Google Analytics that will stop collecting data in July, 2023. So as you can see for this specific account, this website, we have Universal Analytics installed as well as Google Analytics 4. And like I mentioned, what we wanna do is focus on Google Analytics 4. So go ahead and select your Google Analytics 4 property. Okay, so for the purpose of today's tutorial, I'm gonna use the property Stuart Gould, which is one of our websites. Now, when you first log into Google Analytics and you select your property, that's gonna take you to the home section of your Google Analytics account. Then what you wanna do is navigate over to the left-hand side and then click on Reports and that's gonna take you directly to your reports snapshot. And this is where most likely you're gonna spend the majority of your time. This is essentially a performance snapshot of everything that's happening on your website. And the first report snapshot that you'll see is this user activity. So for example, over here, you can see the number of users, new users, the average engagement time, as well as the total revenue over a specific period of time. Now, if we navigate up to the right-hand side, you can see that we have the last 28 days selected from the 1st of November through to the 28th of November, 2022. Now, we can also click on this date range and we can navigate over to the left-hand side and we can choose to view a snapshot of the performance of our website for today, yesterday, this week, and we also have these other default reporting times that we can select. You can also navigate down and select custom to add a custom date range and you can also compare different date ranges if you like. At the moment, I'm happy with the previous 28 days. So again, if I navigate over to users, this is the number of users we've had over the last 28 days visiting our website. Next to that, we have new users. This is the number of new users over the last 28 days. So the majority of users are new users that have arrived at our website. Next to new users, we have average engagement time. If we click here, we can see the average engagement time on our website. So for example, on Saturday the 19th of November, the average engagement time on our website was one minute and 28 seconds. This is a user navigating through our website. 
Then next to average engagement time, we have total revenue and you can measure the total revenue that your website generates. And I'm going to show you how to set this up in a more advanced tutorial. Now next to our user activity, we have users in the last 30 minutes. This is a snapshot of the real time activity on our website. You can see the users in the last minute. You can see the top countries down here. Now we can also navigate over to view real time and that's going to take us to the full real time dashboard, which we're going to dive into shortly. Next, if we navigate down the page, we have insights. Google Analytics is going to generate insights based on the data that they've collected. Again, you can also navigate down and view all insights. Next to this, we have a report snapshot of where do your new users come from. Think about the different channels that you leverage that your users are coming from to arrive at your website. You can see that we have organic search, so people typing in keywords related to our website and then discovering our website on Google search. We also have organic video. These could be videos on our website or YouTube videos that people are discovering and then clicking through to our website. Down here we have direct. This is when someone types in your website directly into their browser. Then we have referral coming from other websites and then organic social. So from different social media channels. Again, we can navigate down and view the user acquisition in more detail. Then if we navigate down further, we have what are your top campaigns? Again, these are the channels that we just mentioned. However, this is a snapshot of the number of sessions per channel. So the top channel for the number of sessions is organic search. And remember, this is sessions, not users. There is a difference. For example, if a website visitor lands on your website and they navigate through your website, then that is a user. However, if that same user navigates through your website, let's say five times over the date period that you selected, then that counts for five sessions. So again, down here we have sessions per channel. So again, down here is the number of sessions per the different channels that we leverage. Next to this, we have users by country and you can see the country that your users are coming from. Then if we navigate down further again, we have how are active users trending? So this is your user activity over time. You can see that the overall trend is positive. This means that our website is growing over time in terms of the number of website users. And you can see the last 30 days, seven days and one day. Next to that, we have how well do you retain your users? So this is all about website user retention. If we navigate down to October the 16th through to the 22nd of October, you can see that over that period, we had 912 users. Then the week after that, we had a 1% retention. Only seven of those users returned. And then again, only two users the week after and then so on and so forth. So again, this will vary depending on the nature of your business, the products and the services that you provide. Does your website typically have new users or returning users that are using your website? And again, we can navigate down to view greater details about our user retention. Then if we scroll down further, we have the pages and screens that get the most views. So you can see our top viewed page is this blog post here with 621 views over this period up here. So again, you can see a snapshot of how your top pages are performing. Again, we can navigate down and view pages and screens in more detail. Then next to this, we have a screen snapshot of what are your top events. And events are any activities that are happening on your website. For example, down here, the top event is page view. This is when a user views a page. Then we have session start, user engagement, the first view scrolling down the page clicks and then view search results. You also have a snapshot of your conversions. And again, I'm going to show you how to set up conversions in a more advanced tutorial. This allows you to track specific events that are happening on your website. For example, these could be conversions in the form of sales, bookings or other types of form submissions. Then if we navigate down further, you can see your top selling products if you sell products and if you engage in e-commerce activities. And then you can also see how does the activity on your platforms compare. This is in terms of conversions. Okay, so if we navigate back up to the top, 
And up here we have a few options that we want to cover. We can edit comparisons. This is comparing important data. Next to that, we can go ahead and we can share this report. If we go ahead and click share, we can come down and we can share the link for people to view this information, or we can come down and download the file. And you can share this report with other individuals. Next to share, we have insights. If we click on insights, we can understand important information happening on our website. So for example, if I navigate down to demographics, I can navigate down to these questions. For example, what languages do people use the most? What countries do my users come from? So for example, if I click on this question here, I can see my top countries by users. And this has been automatically generated by Google Analytics under Insights. So Insights are great for quickly generating specific information that you wanna know about your website. You can actually also navigate up to the search bar and type in a related question. For example, down here we have Ask Analytics Intelligence. We can ask questions such as how many users did I have last week, trend of monthly users last year, compare revenue users from organic search versus paid. So think about the specific questions you want to ask and Google Analytics will generate that information. Okay, so what I'm going to do is exit out of this. And then next to insights, we have customized report. This is where you can customize your report snapshot. So your report snapshot is made up of cards that you can customize. You can drag and drop each of the different elements or the different cards to place them where you like in terms of the important information that you want to track. You can also delete each of these cards if you like. So for example, if I didn't want insights, I can go ahead and remove the insights card and that's going to remove insights from my dashboard. You can also navigate down the page and go ahead and add additional cards. And this is where we can add summary cards. You can see we have lifecycle cards as well as user cards. For example, if I wanted to add users by city, I can go ahead and click here and then simply navigate up to add card. And that's going to add users by city. If we navigate down, you can see we have users by city down here. So think about the data, the events, the information that you want to track. Again, we can navigate up to the top and we can click on save and we can save changes to the current report or we can save as a new report. This is completely up to you. What I'm going to do is navigate over to back and then discard these changes. Okay, so like I mentioned at the beginning, the report snapshot is where the majority of beginners are going to spend the most of their time. Now, it's important to leverage the report snapshot to compare the performance of your website between different periods of time. So, for example, if we navigate over to the date range and then navigate down to compare and turn this on, and I'm going to navigate down and click on compare with the same period as last year. So, as you can see, what I'm going to do is compare the last 28 days with the same period last year, which is the 1st of November through to the 28th of November 2021. Come down and click apply and you can see a comparison over here. Again, with each of the different snapshots, you can see a comparison between the different years. You can see the growth of the number of sessions, the growth of the number of users per different countries, as well as the different channels that we're leveraging and the number of users as well as new users, average engagement time and more you can see the percentage increase. Okay, so I'm gonna navigate back over to the date range and I'm gonna turn compare off. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is navigate over to the left-hand side and under reports snapshot, what we're gonna do is briefly talk about real time as well as user life cycle and the different stages down here as well as users behavior in terms of demographics and technology. So first of all, what we want to do is go ahead and select real time. We can either click on real time here or we can navigate over to our report snapshot and under users in the last 30 minutes, we can click on view real time. However, what we're going to do is navigate over to the left hand side and click on real time. This is where we can view our users on our website in real time. As you can see in the last 30 minutes, we've had three users. And then you can see a breakdown of information in terms of those live users in real time. This real time report is important for identifying exactly who's visiting your website in the last 30 minutes. For example, if you just created a campaign of some sort across different social media channels and you wanted to view the performance in real time, then this is an important place for you to use. Okay, so if we navigate back over to the left hand side, we have life cycle under real time. 
First off, we have acquisition. This is how your visitors are finding your website online. Below acquisition, we have engagement, and this is what your visitors are actually doing on your website. Below engagement, we have monetization, and this is all about your website users and their buyer behavior. And then below monetization, we have retention, which is all about the retention of your website visitors. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click on acquisition, and we can click on acquisition overview, which again is where you're gonna spend the majority of your time when it comes to acquisition, or you can specify the user acquisition and dive into the analytics of user acquisition. So how your users, your website users are being acquired. And then we have traffic acquisition, and this is all about the sessions that your website is receiving. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on acquisition overview. Again, this is everything to do with acquisition. Remember, this is how your website visitors are finding your website. Again, over here, we have real time, a snapshot of the real time. We have our new users and the different channels that are sending our users to our website. Then we have the number of sessions, again, coming from the different channels. And then if you're running any Google ads, you can see the metrics over here per session as well as lifetime value if you're tracking monetization. And again, similar to the report snapshot, we can change the date range up here, as well as these other options over here if we wanna share the report in terms of the acquisition, as well as customize the report under acquisition overview. Okay, so what we can do is actually navigate down to view user acquisition, or we can click on user acquisition to view the specific user acquisition. Or we can click on sessions, which is traffic acquisition, traffic acquisition over here, which is all about the sessions. So if you wanna dive into more detail in terms of traffic acquisition or user acquisition, go ahead and click on those options, or you can click the options over here. Again, this is a brief beginner's tutorial for those that are just getting started with Google Analytics. We'll provide a more advanced tutorial in the future that will dive deeper into more advanced analytics. Okay, so under acquisition, we have engagement. If we click on engagement and then select engagement overview, we can identify exactly what our users are doing on our website. Again, this is an overview of the engagement of our website, exactly what our users are doing on our website. Again, we briefly talked about the engagement over on the report snapshot. This is just where you can dive deeper into the engagement overview. If we navigate back over to the left hand side, we can view events as well as conversions and pages and screens. Again, we can navigate over to the far right hand side and this is where we can view events as well if we like. And you can measure the types of events that your website pages are receiving. We have views by page title and screen. Again, we can click here or down here to view more details in terms of our website page performance. And then we have more data in terms of the engagement. Okay, so what we're gonna do is navigate over to monetization and then click on monetization overview. This is for those that have set up monetization. Now we haven't set up monetization for this specific website. However, what we're gonna do in a more advanced tutorial is show you how to set up monetization and understand the analytics around monetization. Again, down here, we can view e-commerce purchases, in-app purchases and publisher apps. These are all the different ways that you can generate revenue through your website. And again, if we navigate down further, we have retention. This is all the analytics in terms of your returning users, the overall retention of your website and bringing back returning visitors. Then again, we're gonna navigate down further and under user, we have demographics. If we click on demographics, we can choose the overview or demographic details. Again, this is just gonna provide information about your audience. So if I click on demographic overview, you can see users by country. We have city, gender, interests, and users in the last 30 minutes, as well as language down here and age. This is all about who your audience is. Then below demographics, we have tech. If we click on tech and then click on tech overview, this is where you can view platforms, operating systems, and the devices that your users are using when they navigate through your website. 
Again, we have platform here, 100% of our users are coming from the web. If we navigate down, we have the operating systems. Our top operating system is Windows. Then next to this, we have users by platform. We have web desktop, web mobile, and then tablet. So desktop is the main platform. Then if we navigate down further, we have browsers. So the top performing browser is Chrome, then Safari, then Firefox. The tech overview is important because it helps you identify which platform, browser, or operating system that you want to optimize your website for. So I want to make sure that my website shows up nicely on Chrome, as well as on desktop and mobile, as well as my website being responsive on the screen resolution of 1920 by 1080. Okay, so with the brief overview of reports covered, what we want to do is navigate over to the left hand side and come down and click on explore. This is where you can dive deeper into the analytics by creating reports and graphs in terms of specific data that you want to collect and measure within reports. You can create a report from scratch or you can choose from a template gallery. Again, we're gonna talk more about explorations in a more advanced tutorial. Okay, so next what we're gonna do is navigate back over to the left hand side and click on advertising. This is essentially everything to do with your advertising efforts, your paid advertising efforts. So again, if you engage in paid advertising through Google Ads, this is a place that you'd spend some of your time if you've connected Google Ads with your Google Analytics account. Again, we'll dive deeper into the advertising analytics in a more advanced tutorial. Okay, so if we navigate back over to the left, we also have configure. And this is where you can create specific events. You can see the default events down here that you're currently tracking. What you can do is navigate over to create event and create a specific event that you want to track. This could be a conversion. For example, it could be a successful booking form submission. It could be a specific click on your website. It could also be purchases or any other important event that you want to track. Again, what I'll do is add a more advanced tutorial down below in the description that will guide you through the process of creating your first event. However, that is everything we wanted to cover in this beginner's tutorial, helping you understand how Google Analytics works so that you can navigate through your different dashboards and identify how your website is performing. And there we have it guys, that is it for this beginner's tutorial, helping you understand Google Analytics 4. Now if you have any questions about this tutorial, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to this channel. And that way I'll see you in the next video. Take care everyone.